The production possibilities frontier is an economic model used to illustrate how people and nations should decide what goods to produce, how much to produce, and for whom they should produce it. It's a model and a concept that looks at only two goods at a time. For example, what combination of cars and computers should a nation produce? The production possibility curve illustrates all the possible combinations of how we can produce these two goods given the constraints we have, including the fact that resources are scarce. The question we're answering in this lesson is, what causes the production possibilities curve to shift? Before we answer this, let's review some of the basic ideas about the production possibilities curve using two types of curves. Let's say we have a production possibility curve showing the production of two goods, cars and computers. Now, economists also use the PPF model to illustrate two categories of goods both consumer goods and capital goods. So here's what that PPF curve looks like. In any economy, investments into capital goods will do more to increase economic growth than investments into consumer goods will. For both of these types of curves, though, every point along the curve is efficient, meaning this combination of producing two goods is at our capacity. We're producing the most that we can with the least amount of costs. Movement along this curve reveals the trade-offs that are required to produce more or less of a good. We said that any point inside the curve is not efficient and any point outside the curve is unobtainable. The best example in history of when America's economy was inside the curve was during the Great Depression. At that time, unemployment was extremely high and production was extremely low. But eventually, during World War II, our economy moved from inside the curve to somewhere on the curve. Now we're producing things as fast as we can, largely driven by the war, but we were on the curve. Even though we were producing a lot more, we still had a limit, a capacity that we couldn't exceed unless something major changed, and that's why any point that is outside the curve is not possible. The production possibilities curve, whether it's showing two specific goods such as cars and computers, or two types of goods such as capital goods and consumer goods, it shows us how much is produced, which means it's showing us a picture of output. So now we can talk about shifts in the entire curve. The basic idea is that anything that causes economic output to increase or decrease will shift this curve. In any economy, the major goal that you're trying to achieve is growth, which is to say, producing increasing amounts of the goods and services that consumers demand. Given the fact that resources are scarce, we have constraints, which is what the curve shows us. When the economy grows, and all other things remain constant, we can produce more. So this will cause a shift in the production possibilities curve outward or to the right. If the economy were to shrink, then of course the curve would shift to the left. When the curve shifts outward or to the right, that means output is increasing.